Has anybody here actually heard of Wu Ling before, for the purpose of this talk, actually? A couple of you, several. Fantastic. Uh, for all of you who don't know, uh, Wu Ling is web based software that allows users to uh, run reviews of technical elements of your website. Uh, that impacts search friendliness using data from services like Majestic and Alexa and Google APIs and our own bots. Uh, and then we bring all that information together in one convenient place that lets you monitor changes that you make and then download reports so that you can show what you're doing to anyone who is interested to know, be that your boss, your clients, your mom, whoever you want to show what you actually do with your days, we can help with that. Uh, but I'm not really going to talk about technical SEO today, because uh, that's not really like, my jam. And I'm really glad that it is some of your jams, uh, because you're the ones who keep people who are worth finding getting found. Uh, but I think it's better for me, and it's definitely better for them, if I don't do it. Uh, so instead, I do marketing, I do communications, I tell the odd joke on the side. And if I leave you with anything today, it's not going to be how to be funny. Um, but instead, I want to encourage you to think differently about the way that you approach uh, social media with humor. Because generally what we want to avoid is this. Uh, but when we think about brands using humor, uh, often this is what we're afraid of. Uh, that sort of generic, overreaching, God, guys, look at me. I can be funny. I can be fun. You should buy what I'm selling. I call that the Hillary Clinton of brand humor, and it's not what we want. Um, because humor shouldn't work that way. Instead, humor is a way to make genuine connections with people about things they care about that ultimately will lead them back to your brand. So, uh, let's start with the basics. What is it that actually makes people laugh? First off, unhelpfully, anything. Anything can make a person laugh. It completely depends on who it is that you're talking about and uh, what the context is and situation. Let me illustrate this. Recently, I came across this meme on Reddit. And I thought this meme, I can't exactly explain to you why, but I thought this was so funny that I had to sit down. Um, so I went to my dad, the person from whom my humor comes, and I said, Dad, what do you think of this? And I will show you exactly what he did. He looked at me, he looked at it, he looked back at me, and he said with the most profound disgust in his voice, what the fat? Like it wasn't even worth it for him to actually swear about it. And then he got up and he left. Sorry. Uh, he was no longer interested in like sharing space with this weirdo that he made 27 years ago. So the moral of that story is that there's no one thing that you can be sure is going to make somebody laugh, especially your audience. Which, like, if you were hoping for that as a hard and fast rule, uh, I'm afraid all I can do is recommend to you very highly the two talks that are coming later on, which are going to be excellent, sort of ease your disappointment about this one. Um, but otherwise, there's a lot of freedom that comes with the fact that you don't know whether something's going to work because it means that really all you can do is try. Uh, second, people laugh when you defy an expectation or you break a pattern. Um, this You'll see that a lot in like one-liner jokes, like, <clears throat> I used to wet myself every time I had to stand in front of my primary school class. It almost cost me my teaching career. Um, jokes like that are funny because they're unexpected. Um, well, they're funny for like a couple of you. Uh, because they're unexpected. Um, and third, this is the one that I want to focus on. Most people laugh when uh, it's something they can relate to. Okay, they laugh at things because they're true. When you first learn how to do improvised comedy, one of the first things that they teach you is that comedy is based in truth. So comedians like Michael McIntyre will write entire bits on the trauma that is getting one's children down the stairs, into their shoes, and out the door in a timely manner because then every parent in the world simultaneously watches and goes, oh my god, that was me and John David Jr. this morning for school and I am currently laughing so I don't start crying. Um, now that's fine and good. Uh, for the most part, I don't have to explain to you what humor is because uh, generally you all have a sense of it. Uh, you love to laugh just as much as the next person, but why is it that we want to use it uh, in social media? The answer is twofold. Uh, the first has to do with the medium, and the second has to do with the message, and I promise this is not about to become like a Marshall McLuhan lecture, so stay with me, people. Um, 
First, the medium. Uh, what is it that people are looking for when they get on social media? That's a real question. I'd really like to know. No answer means that it's probably a really good idea that y'all are in the social session of Brighton SEO. Um, so according to a study last year by the American Press Institute, 58% of millennials uh, get onto Facebook just to find something to entertain them, right? That is a number that is dwarfed only by 76% uh, who unsurprisingly go on to find out what's happening in their friends' lives. But if they can't find anything interesting that's happening in their friends' lives, 60% of them are just as happy if you provide something that will entertain them. So, that's our first reason. If we're not the ones doing the entertaining, somebody else is. Uh, second is about the message we're sending. So, we all know, right, that there are unconscious indicators that draw people toward one another, right? For, for example, classically, a woman with very shiny hair is considered more attractive to a man uh, because unconsciously he'd be aware that she's probably healthy and would be able to bear him multiple healthy children. Okay? Uh, people were and still are drawn to these indicators that make us aware that there's a su potentially successful mating experience waiting to happen. Um, and as time has gone by, the list that we all write when we're 12 years old and we're dreaming about a potential uh, future partner. Um, I really hope you guys also wrote those lists, or else that's very embarrassing. Um, but those lists that we were writing have changed. Because uh, in the beginning, when the lists were probably like pictographs on cave walls of guys hunting, it was probably like, good hunter, runs very fast, is strong like a mammoth, right? And then years later, millennia later, um, we got to the place where I was like, hmm, well reputed uh, from an established family that preferably has a title and money. Today, do you know what people on average uh, put toward the top of their list of what they're looking for in a potential relationship? Having a compatible sense of humor is like the new, not super new, but like in geological time, pretty new shiny hair, you guys, because to make somebody laugh, you have to understand them. You have to get where they're coming from. Um, one moment. It's not a sign of a su potentially successful mating experience. Instead, it's a sign of a potentially successful relationship. And that's the perspective that companies have to take when they're thinking about employing humor uh, as brands in their social media. They want to make genuine connections with people. Um, it's not the end goal. Humor is not the end goal of social media strategy and more than food is the end goal of a dinner date, right? It's a tool for wooing people, for getting to know people, and for showing them that you can meet the criteria on their list if they have a list of things that they would like in a company that they would someday like to purchase from. Show people that you understand what they want and they're more likely to trust you to give them what they need later on. So, uh, how do we get there? In marketing, just like literally everything else in adult life, there's not meant to be a what without a why. Even if it seems like there are a lot of brands and basically everyone posting on Tumblr uh, are just forging blindly ahead and getting lucky, they're not. Uh, in fact, a brand that wants to succeed at humor in marketing should basically give themselves four tools. Um, and I have come up with a very clever way of helping you to remember what they are. We can all be funny if. <laughs> um, the four tools are identity, feelings, focus, and freedom. And I swear to God, I spent 24 hours trying to think of a way to make identity start with F, and I didn't do it. So, uh, sorry. But first, let's talk about identity. The first two. This is the question that we all had to figure out when we were in college. Uh, who am I? So who are you? Um, but instead, this time I'm going to philosophy class, take a step back and think about your brand. Yeah, you might be an agency or a furniture store or a restaurant, that's what you are, but who are you? What is your identity as a brand? Because whether you're giving your social media to a third party or whether you're just feeling particularly blocked and coming up with new material, having an identity will give you parameters within which to work and the accompanying inspiration 
that comes with having a focus. So let me show you how this works. I want everyone in here to close their eyes and think of something funny, okay? It can be about anything, anything you want. Uh, it has to be short, sweet, and original, okay? Has everybody thought of something? Probably not. Because say something funny isn't a thing, right? But what if I give you a little bit of help? What if I say, close your eyes and think about something funny about dating? Is it easier? How about something funny about a first date? How about you close your eyes and think about something funny about a first blind date? Easier still? Think of something funny about a first blind date that was set up for you by your mother. And all of a sudden, before you know it, your creative juices are flowing, given everything that you know about mothers and who they might choose for you, or maybe this has actually happened to you. Whatever the circumstances are, you've given yourself the gift of materials to focus in on, right? So, giving yourself an identity also has the bonus of if you're constantly returning to your identity as the source for your creativity, uh, then you're constantly generating new material that naturally points back to your brand and what you have to offer. So, Old Spice is a brand who's well known for putting a man on a horse who then announces with diamonds dripping from his hand that he is on a horse, okay? They've long been an established brand for fragrance for a dignified gentleman, um, but in 2010 they decided they wanted to pivot into younger markets. That meant they had to go through a bit of an identity shift as they changed from your grandfather's smell to every man's smell. So what they decided to do is dig down into their identity as a fragrance for men. Capital M-E-N, right? That identity and all the weird stuff that went along with it uh, provided the inspiration for their social media, every weird thing they've ever posted online, and all of their commercials, ranging from the man that your man could smell like to the weird relationship that men have with their moms as they make the transition from boyhood to adulthood. Okay? By narrowing in, by finding and digging into that identity as a fragrance for men, they've given themselves the incredible gift of all the material of what it means to smell like a dude. Okay? On the other side of the identity slash scent spectrum, this is a company called Poopery, and that is their actual name. They are a brand, a woman-owned company of spray that you use in the bathroom before anything else happens in the bathroom. And their identity is found in the fact that whatever it is that happens in the bathroom is uncomfortable, despite the fact that every person in here should be doing it on a regular basis. And their mission is to make it more comfortable, right? So, oh, back here. They, uh, their spokesperson is a young British sounding woman who opens a stall door in their first commercial and says the most raunchy things about what it is that she's just accomplished in the ladies room. Their slogan is, our business is to make it seem like your business never even happened. And their first humorous commercial, uh, aptly entitled Girls Don't Poop, has started 36 million views on YouTube. And that one, that one ad took them from slow and steady growth to $4 million in back orders and annual sales topping $30 million per year. So the first, the first gift, the first tool that we want to give ourselves is identity. Who are we as a brand and what do we want to communicate on social media? Sometimes talking about your identity gets you part of the way there, but not all the way there. So we're going to talk about the next level. Feelings. We as people want to feel things, right? Uh, we want to be taken in by uh, the latest antics of a presidential candidate. Um, isn't that a great picture? It's like my favorite picture right now. Um, or we want to be touched by the fact that there's a man in Australia who has donated his plasma a thousand times and has saved the lives of two million children. Okay? Or just made to laugh by uh, other people who own dogs, dog shaming. Okay? We want to feel things as people, and as social media marketers, it's our job to inspire feelings that people want to feel, right? This is Denny's. It is a diner chain in the States that is open 24 hours a day, and you can get breakfast anytime you want. 
Uh, and when they decided that they wanted to impact wider audiences, they started with their identity, America's Diner, a place where everyone can eat super greasy food and feel super comfortable just being themselves, right? In the words of their chief marketing officer, they then realized that they had to put emotion back into their brand because it became clear that a diner is not necessarily a place as much as it is a feeling, a place where everyone can come together and feel good about being them, park their titles at the door, and make genuine connections with people that either they know and already care about or complete strangers, okay? And that feeling that they wanted to get across started impacting everything that they did and every message that they sent. Identifying the feeling that you want to leave people with is the second tool that you can give yourself for human marketing, right? It sharpens your focus on your content because you, when you know the feelings that you want to communicate, you can start to shape your voice. Denny's wanted everyone to view their social channels and feel like they were chatting to a friend or a stranger across a booth. And like a lot of people uh, who want to eat pancakes at three in the morning, voice is a little bit center, but it's very positive, it's very welcoming, and it's, already, it's always ready to talk about whatever it is happening in the world today. Now, let's contrast this with someone who doesn't necessarily know what they would like me to feel. Um, this is Denny's. They are averaging 1,800 engagements per post. This is Bob Evans, another diner in the States where you can get breakfast all of the time. Um, they don't seem completely sure what they would like me to feel when I'm on their social media channels. Um, basically, the feeling that I usually leave with is this is a brand that serves breakfast and also sometimes other things. Um, it's bland. It doesn't require me to do anything or react in any way, which is why their average engagement is between 7 and 10. These are two nationwide chains in the US who serve similar markets. This one gets an average of 7 to 10 engagements. Denny's gets an average of 1,800 engagements, okay? So, feelings. Let's talk about the third tool, focus. Who are your people? We're going to talk about Denny's again because they discovered that the, there was a component that identifying their identity and their feelings that they wanted to communicate that wasn't yet there. Um, and it came about basically through trial and error. Okay? It came about through the unique ecosystem that each individual network that they were on uh, was producing. So the relationship between the content creators and the content consumers on each individual network. This is the part where a brand needs to create a constant feedback loop whereby people are creating content, pushing it out on social, adjusting depending on how people react, and pushing more content. And eventually, you can narrow in on exactly who's paying attention to you on each individual social network, right? Um, using that sort of feedback loop, what you want is to create humorous content that's designed specifically for your followers on Facebook, who are different from your, from your followers on Twitter, who are different from your followers on Tumblr, um, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, the last tool that we're gonna give ourselves today is freedom, okay? This goes along with everything in social media. Not everything that's published, whether it matches your identity, communicates the feelings that you wanna get across perfectly, um, it's for the users on the network where you're publishing, and generally you find hilarious, not everything is going to be successful. Um, because that's part of the game of social media. There's a great amount of freedom in that as well. We, as social media marketers, um, have permission to fail because that's the only way that we learn, because it's not about us, it's about the relationship that we have with our users. That means that as brands we have to give ourselves the fourth gift, uh, the fourth tool, which is the willingness to take risks. But remember the other gifts that we've already decided that we're going to give ourselves. Um, they take those other gifts, identity, feelings, and, and uh, focus, take those risks from total shot in the dark level to prepared and ready level. Okay? These gifts make you the US Coast Guard of social media. You are semper paratus. You are always ready to engage with whatever comes your way. In 2013, there was a live performance of The Sound of Music in the US. And DiGiorno Pizza, a frozen pizza brand in the States, decided that they would live tweet it. But they didn't decide until it was starting. Okay? This was a completely unplanned event. 
But because they had a strategy in place, uh, because they knew who they were talking to, and they had complete trust in the people who were managing their social media, the person who was managing their Twitter account could follow his creativity wherever it took him and make more than 30 tweets about the hills being alive with the smell of pizza. Okay? This earned thousands of engagements. It got covered by BuzzFeed. Um, and it made me, for one, aware that DiGiorno Pizza even had a social media presence at all. Gifts also give you permission to say no to things. Uh, when we were having the initial brainstorm for what we were going to talk about today, um, my boss said, Natalie, what if uh, we change your title for this talk? And I was like, cool. Like, maybe something something manager, or chief something something. Um, and he looked at me dead in the eyes, and he was not kidding. He said, how would you like to be our ha-ha architect? <laughs> and like, what? Um, okay, that doesn't have anything to do with the gifts that we talked about, but like, what the hell kind of job titles? Ha-ha architect. So I said no. Um, I put together a line of emojis because this is how easy it is to remember. Uh, we can be funny if identity, feelings, focus, and freedom. So briefly, let's talk about WooRank and how we have dealt with um, these gifts. Our, in simplified terms, our identity comes from the fact that we as software exist to demystify, simplify, and streamline SEO and digital marketing. Okay? So, that means that the feeling we want to leave people with is, maybe I could do SEO if I just got a little bit of help and gave it a go. Or, even better, maybe I could communicate to my customers what SEO is, uh, regardless of their density. To accomplish that, we hired an illustrator. You can meet him at the Wu-Rang table afterwards, and if you're quick, you can get him to uh, make you a live drawing, which we'll then tweet to you later. Um, and he sat down with me and with our SEO expert, Sam, who's also a master of the classic dad joke and general wordplay, and we started making single panel, single panel New Yorker-style cartoons um, using general SEO and digital marketing terms. Uh, we ran a caption contest at Christmas, the prize for which was a mug with a cartoon printed on it. Um, we have a Snapchat filter that you can actually use while you're in this building. Basically, we're trying everything because through that we can develop our voice and figure out what it is that people want to know. Um, the options, the opportunities are endless. So what I want to leave you with today is that you don't have to be funny, you don't have to consider yourself a funny person or to have a funny product in order to use humor as a humanizing part of your brand. All you have to do is give yourself a couple of tools and before you know it, you can start making those genuine connections with your users uh, that'll woo them back to your brand long after the final joke has been delivered. Uh, I've gone far over time, so uh, I won't take questions right now, but if anybody wants to talk, I'll be out there afterwards. Uh, thank you.